Hey, everybody. This is Mark Zweig, and I'm back here with my buddy, Eric Howerton, and his business partner, J.S. Bull. I don't know anything about J.S. other than what Eric's told me. <laughs> it's the way we planned uh, it. Yeah, that's right. So this should be an interesting be show. Yeah. This is another episode of Big Talk About Small Business. He hasn't been practicing. We we rehearse that every time. We do. Yeah, we're getting better. Yeah. At first, it was like Eric said business, and I said business. Then I started saying business, and he said business. Anyway, I think we've got it down now. He's a disruptor. It is. Yeah. Oh, you were a disruptor. Oh, yeah. Like, it's true. This gives me a Yeah, sorry. Let's throw some other cliches out. Can we be storytellers today? Ooh, I like that. Shall we pivot? Uh Uh-oh. Or take a deep dive into (laughs) J.S. Bull's background? (laughs) I, I, I read the things not to do, and this is basically this, the whole list, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I just have to poke fun <laughs> at that. No podcast. acronyms and cliches. This, said, yeah, let's do it. This is let's go. Oh, we're part Rule of a, breakers. We're part of a cohort today. Jeez. It's never a group anymore. It's a cohort. Cohort. Everything's a cohort. I like that. So we've got a cohort of three here in the studio today, um, and I guess pairs of each other. We know each other here. Eric well, and I know each other, yeah. and Eric and JS know each other. You know, I was actually thinking on the uh, way to this podcast, I was like, this is actually a really special podcast for me That's individually. It. Okay. I mean, I got two of my probably favorite business people that I've ever met, two incredible leaders and fantastic entrepreneurs that I've known for a long time each in separate, kind of like separate lives, but all in the same town. And y'all never met. That's what's yeah. nuts, man. Crazy, right? It's, yeah. It is absolutely crazy, but I mean, it's it's uh, it's awesome. Well, I mean, I'm pretty I was, sure I've heard your name more than you've heard my name. I've I've heard your name, so yeah. no worries about that. Yeah, um, I've talked about you a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit. How did you two guys get acquainted? Do you want to tell the story, JS? You do well. I can tell it real quick. I was basically back at one of my agency companies back in like 2008 or nine or somewhere around there. Okay. And uh, it was a t- small two-person team, three-person team ahead of the time. And, I, and JS was working at Pace Industries, leading sales there. And I walked in, I, and we actually got introduced by a friend, old Nicholas J. McLeod. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Correct. and we met at that On the Rocks down in Dixon. And he introduced us, and then I set up a meeting with you. So I went down there to pitch him some photography creative services back uh-huh. in the day. And uh, JS and I got along pretty well, and then uh, he actually did some work. But then I, went. well, Eric decided to come back in, and we were going to say, "Yes, you got the work." And he said, "Oh, actually, I can't do it." <laughs> yeah. No, typical. So, yeah. Typical. Well, it's, I had taken it, another job. Yeah. It's the pull away. What yeah, was yeah. the job? Was uh, was, I worked at Rockfish Interactive okay. up here for yeah. not very long, but I went on board there, and I quickly. Isn't that the one I think my brother's company ended up buying? Yeah, the WPP. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Rockfish, I knew it. Yeah, they were a really great digital company here in town. Did a lot of stuff for Walmart suppliers. And so mm-hmm. JS had actually worked there before, too. And so anyway, mm-hmm. I did a little stint there. Then I went back out on my own, like not very long after that. And then... Uh, then you went to work for Zweig Group. Then I went Zweig to work for Zweig Group. Yeah, yeah. Zweig White with you. So that's when we got introduced in 2010. Yeah. So it was yeah. like 2008 with JS, then 2010 with Mark. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then we did the white spider thing and we continued working with Mark and then JS, I went back and approached him about some services through white spider with pace industries. Mm -hmm. We did some work with JS then. And then, uh, JS also had one of his side gigs, uh, Kobe valve that you're doing. Mm -hmm. What's that? Kobe valve was a startup along the way. And, uh, a local inventor came up with the concept. It was an emergency tire valve. Okay. Which Probably no one thinks is actually a need, right? Um, but <laughs> I don't know. this Did tire it valve, it was, it was innovative because you could stick it from the outside of the wheel in. Mm. Okay. And what it was really good for was off-road riding. Okay. So if you hit a stump or a rock and you shear off a valve stem, which happens right. more often sure. than you'd think, yeah. um, typically your ATV would be done, right? right? And in this case, you know, as long as the, the tire hadn't been unseated, um, stick it in from the outside. You tighten it up, create the seal from the backside, and air it up. Interesting. Air can and never heard about that. What how happened do you do it? Uh, so uh, it very uh, beneficially mm-hmm. sold it to mm-hmm. the inventor, mm-hmm. um, and that gave us the money to buy into White Spider. Yeah. Awesome. 
Yeah, so along the way, JS, so Kobe Val was a Weisberg client, so was Pace Industries. Uh huh. And I'll tell you, I was actually talking with somebody earlier today about us meeting, and I was in, in, in kind of the when JS came aboard White Spider, but I was like, you know, the one thing I knew about JS when he was a client, but he's also on our board of advisors as well. But as a client, I remember JS coming into our office with work, right, that we were, that our team was doing. Yeah. And I'd never seen a client that would sit down with my team, you know, who he was paying and like sure. coach them and mentor them. And I just thought that was one of the coolest things. I was like, man, that's, you know, that is a class A leader right sure. there, you know? So it just really impressed me. And then, then of course, uh, when I bought out my co-founder, Alex and Maude with, from White Spider, I was just went over to JS as, and for advice. I'm like, hey man, I was like, look, this is what we're doing, this and that. And then just it stars kind of aligned to where it's good t- timing for JS too. And Had you already decided worst, to go? Worst timing for me ever. It was absolutely the worst timing. True, ever. yeah, yeah. Tell that little story, that's <laughs> yeah. a good one, yeah. So, Good. I'm just gonna ask. Did you already decided to go in the software business then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, we already had yeah. software for about a year or so yeah. that we're okay. developing, and okay. yeah, we're turning it. To yes. Q News would probably add four to six kind of features or products mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in it, um, and we could get into more later. But probably 32 that had been started but mm-hmm. not finished. Yeah, right. My fault. Yeah. Squirrel <laughs> chasing nuts. Right? Yeah. Squirrel. Um, but no. So Eric comes over and he says, "Hey, I've got this concept." And so as he starts to lay it out for me, uh, I was, it was a really good time for me in my career at Pace Industries, but I was really itching to get back in the world of Walmart, mm-hmm. yeah. but also had a daughter on my first child on the way. Yep. Um, and it was very comfortable in uh, my income and setup and life and everything else. And uh, he came over and started talking to me about this and I just got a little bit jazzed up. Right? Yeah. I mean, I was like, man, this is, I miss this stuff, right? Yeah, like, sure. And I had started several companies and software in the past. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I just said, just thinking through it, thinking, oh man, I wish I was doing this exciting stuff, <laughs> right? I was like, man, I kind of wish you'd ask me to help you buy Alex out. Mm-hmm. And he stood up and slapped the, the bar and said, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, too late, brother. Sit down, my friend. Sit down, my friend. He is decisive. I like that. This is why you came over here. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. It it wasn't to come over and drink my beer. It was to (laughs) to recruit recruit me as a partner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But over the next, and that was probably January or February. Yeah, like February of 2019. Yep. And then quickly we made the deal. We were closed up mid-April. Mid-April, and I joined the the beginning of May. Wait a minute. Now you had your first kid in 2019. I did. You waited a while. Oh, I did. Yeah. You know, there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. Like, that's not what we're here to talk about, but <laughs> Dude, like, that's not at all. Both. Like, it's nice, like, having a steady income. Of course, I gave that up to join sure. the spot. <laughs> but it's nice to, like, yeah. you know, be kind you of established. be ready. Do a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know. People are like, you'll never be ready to have kids. I'm like, no, you actually <laughs> can be ready. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was you know, pretty you're early. A, you're a late bloomer, too. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I had them second. over a long yeah. period of time. <laughs> My kids span 24 years. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Triumph. But I got a 12 year old, bro. Had her at, had her at um, 53. So I was older than you. There you go. Wow. Yeah. So we, but anyway. JS joins mid April 2019 uh, as a oh, partner yeah. of 2019. Then in, Unbelievable. Then in May, he came full time at White Spider because he had to kind of close, close up the, you know, stuff uh-huh. at pace because he'd been there so long and leading the company. In a lot of ways, well, leading the sales of the company, excuse well, me. Well, not and not all sales, but well, yeah, well, North America sales, yeah, yeah, well, like five of the like ten divisions. Okay, let's yeah. that's half. It's a that's lot of sales. There's a lot of sales. <laughs> so he's telling something though. It's just not overstate, <clears throat> right? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I'm sorry. Good. Stay accurate. Thanks. <laughs> you got to watch him on that. <laughs> you know, accuracy is a gray area, it's right? Yeah. Exaggeration yeah. never. No. All all entrepreneurs it's do. It's all that. good. Yeah. It's like how many people do you have? They got ten. It's like, well, I've got about fifteen or twenty. Back there, yeah, yeah, well, you know, you, well, because you're in the process, you're hiring. It's like, what is it? Yeah, so exactly. I mean, by the time that somebody would look into it, it's kind of like 15. 15. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's the way it's I'm always thinking. the way it is. It's yeah, some kind of a factor. So in May, a month after you came in, you know, uh, well, you came in in May, and then it wasn't two months later that we were having a bologna sandwich at the Amish restaurant in downtown Springdale, where our office was. I didn't even know there was an Amish restaurant. There, there. was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Because he's not there anymore. It was yeah. fantastic. But they had homemade uh-huh. sandwiches and stuff and, and pies, too. Their pies were unbelievable. Pies were good. Pie. Pie. We like pie. And so I was sitting there over that so. bloody sandwich. I go, JS, you know, I was like, man, I was like, I really think you should be CEO. Because I was CEO at that time in mm-hmm. the company. And he was COO at the time. I was like, I think you really need to be CEO. I think you can take this place. 
where needs to go. I'm like, you're, you're the man. And he, he didn't just ask me. He asked me mid-bite <laughs> of the sandwich, of course, right? So I basically choke on bologna. Yeah, that was a lot of bologna, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I well just done. do that. The, yeah, no cliche. It's too easy. Bologna is really like a giant hot dog. Did you ever ponder that? Like it's a like giant, a giant flat one. It's like a giant uncooked hot dog. It's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So I asked him, he's like, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested in them. I'm like, great, let's go tell the team, like, right now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you're decisive. JS, like, JS, like you that, know, JS like. is very thoughtful mm -hmm. and considerate and planning. And he's like, hold on. He goes, let's, we need to get some things together for him. I'm like, okay, I'll be patient with this. But anyway, he obviously took the CEO realm. I mean, and just, I mean, uh, the rest is history. I mean, just fantastic leadership. I mean, I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Got to be in that, and I and I'm you're biggest, smart. The big, the smartest thing I did was get the hell out of his way. Well, you're not egocentric, which is why you've been able to build a business and find people like sure. us to be partners. With. Yeah, That's so true. true. My, yeah. I mean, Eric's got it's. He, he's one of the most self aware people. Mm -hmm. um, just understands what he's good at and wants to do that, and yeah. understands. If someone else is, because somebody else is always better at something than you, right? Right, exactly. It, but he's really good at seeing that mm -hmm. and then just letting them go do what they're great at, right? Yep. And I mean, it throughout the time, the four or five years we've been together at White Spider, you've mm -hmm. done it in multiple ways and shifted your focus to where mm -hmm. you could add the most value. Yep. And we built a great team around it, right? Yep, sure did. And yeah, been unbelievably successful. Are you still running White Spider now? I, I am on my way out. Okay. So uh, when we sold, we sold um, in November of 21. Yep. Right. And uh, then we had a two-year earn-out period, so contracted sure. for two more years. Mm -hmm. And that ends at the end of December this year. And so, okay. um, you know, we I had discussions with them about what I could do. But the reality is we, we've been integrated into a central leadership team. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm pretty comfortable in my role as CEO. And they've already got a CEO or two there. So, um, you know, a little redundancy. Yeah. In CEOs. <laughs> but, it, you know, really, I think, uh, you know, we, we don't put our head down and push really hard for oh. the few years. And oh, so. yeah. It was unbelievable. I mean, you've been so successful. It really, it's a well, tremendous it's cool, success. Because Mark's story. been watching the sideline. Yeah, I mean, he right. didn't know you, but I mean, yeah. you know, watching what we're doing and the flips and the, and the, it is, and, and it's the pivots money that we made and the yeah, but the tra the trajectory was all awesome. pivot on this, buddy. <laughs> it's what I'd like to say. But um, no, you guys did an amazing job. Now, how who was it that bought the company again? I know they're British, right? Yeah. So Essential is the name of the company that bought us, which okay. um, had a traditional events and marketing kind of side of the business, and yeah. then a digital commerce side. Okay. And so the digital commerce side uh, has been is being divested and sold to Omnicom now. Okay. Um, and uh, it's branded Flywheel, which I was see. the largest acquisition mm -hmm. that Essential made in the digital commerce segment. Yeah, Flywheel was kind of like we, what we were for Walmart, but they were on the Amazon and, side. Yeah, and you much mentioned larger, that before. And bigger. Yeah. 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 You, you, actually, the number one DSP buyer in wait, the world. What's a DSP now? <laughs> okay. Man side platform. Okay. Yeah. Thank advertising. You. Advertising trade. Sorry, yeah. The rules. Yeah, no, I agree not. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't think for a second on what it even stands for because a the acronym is the name. Yeah, 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 right. well, that's what we call you, that, you came up with it quickly. That's what yeah. they passed that test. I hope I got it right. What? Um, I do too. Um, we can edit that later. So I'm just curious, how did you guys find this buyer? Did they approach you? So, you know, it was like, shoot, the week after I joined White Spider, mm -hmm. uh, my announcement of joining... Uh, somebody at Nielsen Brand Bank saw it and mm -hmm. thought, you know what, we've been thinking we might, you might be a good partner. Might as well reach out now with this. And he mm -hmm. reached out to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was like people were just starting to hear about us in different ways at that time and were coming to us and saying, hey, we think that you guys are heading in the right direction yeah. and you'd be a great synergy with what we've got. So we'd like to talk about buying. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can remember when we were on Emma and Springdale and the yeah. office that Eric picked out um, <laughs> where I saw photos of it recently yeah. where the where the RV was our conference room because there wasn't room inside <laughs> yeah. the building other than no, bathroom. famous fans free it's best. a bathroom it's not a great conference call place right? I put I the do bathroom it. in the center of a 2,000 square foot building or 3,000 square foot building right in the smack dab center and there wasn't another room the there were any other walls there's no other walls yeah 
Anyway, so well, you used to do the podcasts out of that motor. Exactly. Too. Yes. Yeah. I mean, geez, I look at where you've come. I mean, from I, there to here. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. All three buddies. So, so I remember sitting in that RV and taking multiple calls over a mm-hmm. period of months, right, with people saying, you know, we think we'd like to acquire you. Um, and we'd always start the same way, which was it's too early. Too early yeah. See, and I mean, we literally talk about pivots. We literally kicked out all of our existing revenue. Right. I and know. Shifted it's, to try to be a software company. It's amazing. Really? I, yeah. Most companies don't have the guts to do that. Yeah. I mean, I would have a hard time with that because. Or they're too smart to do it. <laughs> no, I love all revenue. Okay. I'm yeah. not one of those guys that an- micro analyzes every yeah. revenue stream and then mm. goes, well, we only made a 22% margin on that and we should make a 47%. Therefore, that goes because all that revenue goes to pay overhead. And it's profitable, and, right? Yeah. And it may, it, nobody ever looks at what happens if I don't have that revenue. Okay. That's the thing with the MBAs. They just, they microanalyze it, but they don't go, okay, now it's gone. All right. right. It's completely gone. Now, how do I pay for all the overhead this is paying for? And and they also don't understand necessarily the linkages. Mm -hmm. Like that business also brings in all this stuff that we make Mm boatloads of money on. But anyway, you guys had the guts to do it Mm -hmm. and you focused and you pulled it off. It was a tremendous Mm -hmm. success. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell uh, you why we did it that way too, because I think I feel like this is a fairly interesting yeah. oh, case study, story. and people can learn from it. Sure. Yeah. So when I came in, um, we had a software company with three developers, mm-hmm. and one was part time, mm-hmm. um, and they're trying to build software while most of our income stream was building websites. Yeah, for yeah, or other companies. Sure, right? that's crazy. Yeah, and so. I said, hey, I can't run a software company without developers dedicated to the software. Yeah, right? it kind of makes sense. And, and so as we looked at the finances, we had a lot of accounts receivable. Mm-hmm. And and some of it was just timing of terms, but some of it was it was poorly acted on and collected mm-hmm. over time, over the transition yeah. of Alex yeah. out of the so business. So that was your, your runway then, was that <clears throat> AR? So that was our funding, right? Yeah. Like that was I our like funding that. we needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the miscalculation that I made was that our sales cycle on the software was longer than I expected it to be. Sure. Yeah. So I thought that was going to cover us until we had monthly recurring revenue from the software. Right. And the sales cycle was six to eight months instead yeah. of three. Right. 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 And so that that was just a, a you know, misestimation yeah. on my part. Um, but, I mean, we literally, I remember. You pulled it off, though. January of 2020, we had uh, $75,000 in expenses and $13,000 in revenue. Right. Yeah, and we're that. fielding a call from someone wanting to buy us on a yeah. multiple of our revenue. And I'm like, it's too early. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. But, um, you know, and so, it, but what's funny is back to like these people meeting with us, every one of them would say, well, let us be the judge of that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, very yeah. like kind, but a little bit condescending. But sure. let us be the judge of that. Sure. We're the experts. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? Three weeks later, they're like, you know what? I think it's a little early. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yes. what come in. Is, I mean, I, I think another lesson here, though, too, you're talking about the case study, is a lot of folks don't understand the amount of time that it takes to field inquiries like that from an M&A or from an No, it does, and it takes your yeah. time away from the business you're and, trying to and run. You, and you yes. take the time it away, not only does. Not just someone, but the yeah. most important leader in the company, right. the it CEO. It takes your focus away from you the know, operation. I mean, it's, but you can't not do it. Right. Yeah. Because exactly. a lot of those, even sure. though people said, hey, they stayed in touch. Right. And they were options. Some of them came back to the table later when yeah. we decided yeah. we were going to sell. Sure. Right? And so... You've got to do that from a networking standpoint to, yeah. and to, to learn too, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. um, I'm sorry, but every founder believes their company's worth more than it is. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, gosh. Sure. I've been involved in hundreds of transactions and it's unbelievable. You see these founders that in my industry, I came out of, there's a lot of old farts <laughs> and they're like 72. They've done nothing to develop any successors. They don't invest in technology. They don't invest in marketing, okay? And they think you're going to come along and pay them a huge price for their company, which is basically needs everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, let me, no, let me restart it not, from yeah, inside. And thank you, this you to, do, it. To, to, to make this yeah. as something that you could sell. Yep. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, everybody thinks it's worth more than it is. But I, I mean, I just wish I had been smart enough. And, and I, I kick myself every day. Um, 
And I had, I did try to get in the software business a couple of times, but this whole idea of the valuation of these um, SaaS companies. Yeah. yeah. And that's saying, honestly, that's subscription. the main Sorry, reason I joined. Audience. Um, I mean, it, it just blows yeah. me away. I mean, it, it absolutely blows me away. And, and, but you know, as well as I do, a lot of these companies are just based on air. And you guys actually developed something that works yep. and you demonstrated it by getting clients that pay you to do it. Yep. And you filled a niche in the market that was unfilled. That was a really big niche in a way. Mm -hmm. I mean, walmart.com. Yep. I mean, after Amazon, I guess they're probably the biggest, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, not counting international competitors yeah, like no, Alibaba, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, in addition to that time, though, I mean, what was also important about those conversations mm -hmm. is just the, the the approach to them. And I mean, JS was, I mean, it's fantastic watching him as he's people, a good poker player, huh? I mean, one of the best negotiators ever met. Uh, I mean, he, he is. It, yeah. But it's very, meth you know, it's methodical. It's right. considerate. It's fair. I mean, there's always yeah. a you know a, a three win there. Sure. Uh, and I mean, it was it was awesome, right? And just I, I mean. Talking about getting out of the way, I knew that I was not, mm -hmm. I was never going to be in that position. Is you know, especially with White Spider, because it was so subjective, right? I mean, I'm just the dude bleeding on the streets, you know, screaming, you know, that this is going to work. Bleeding in the streets. Yeah, man. I mean, I will. I, I had visions of. Well, this is the way I describe you, right? I, I describe mm -hmm. Eric. I say, for about ten years, Eric was the guy on the soapbox saying, mm -hmm. "E-commerce is coming. E-commerce is coming to the Walmart community," and everyone's like. Put your daughter, put your head down and keep walking. You know, <laughs> yeah. Crazy guys here, crazy you know, guy. but he was right yeah. the whole time. He's yeah. just honestly Listen, like the failure, any failures along the way were that you were too early. That's yeah. yeah right? I believe that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I remember when Eric started white spider, he told me he wanted to work for these CPG companies. And I thought, eh. I'm like, Eric, <laughs> you know more. I mean, you remember that? Oh, then yeah. I was so wrong. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know more about the professional services industries. Why not just work for them? They all need marketing help. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and how wrong was I? But he's like, no, they're up here. You know, this is where the action is. Yeah. We're in the heart of it. And then, you know, I mean, in like, Northwest Arkansas. The reality is, is Walmart had a, and, you know, still does have, I mean, all of retailers have problems. Like everybody sure. has problems, right? And I mean, it's just mm -hmm. blatantly obvious. And it's also, you could see the trend. But anyway, I mean, so, but. Being subjective in that, it, I mean, I think that's another thing that's good lesson for founders or entrepreneurs too, is like, in, you know, like the good ones can say, okay, I'm not in the right position nor in the right mindset mm -hmm. to approach the certain scenario. And especially when you have somebody that is like that, they can really do it. And so I believe, sure. you know, JS would go off and he would have a lot of those conversations. And I mean, even when we did go through you know, the acquisition, I mean, he just continued that on and still does today, right? It and takes so, trust, though. Oh, yeah, I mean, totally, obviously, totally. you felt like he was competent and he was representing your interests oh, no, totally. in an intelligent and capable way. Absolutely. And and I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when you really come down to it, I mean, keep in mind, this is called Big Talk About Small, small business. business. Small business people don't trust anybody. <laughs> They are freaking control freaks. Yeah. And this is why they don't grow and That's right. extract value, which is what an entrepreneur does with their business. Yes. Okay. They just make a living. Okay. And then it peaks out somewhere along the way and then it declines. And it, it, if somebody inevitable. comes in with an idea, they're so motivated about protection. Yeah. Protection exactly. is my idea. Like, I mean, I remember, I mean, and I'm speaking a lot during this, I don't want to, Jace, but I mean, I do remember. A lot of folks saying, you know, especially after we got acquired, well, that was your baby or whatever. I mean, it, right. I left the baby scene years and years ago. Yeah. Like it's, it, it was its own identity. We could have it a, is a, but it's really unique. Like you can't sell yourself short on that. And yeah. I, I remember we sat at crisis brewing out mm -hmm. on the patio and that's when we kind of hammered out the deal. Yeah. We bought in. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, Eric, there's one thing that we've got to be aligned on. If we build this thing up. We're going to sell it. There's not going to be any of this founder. No, I don't want to let my thing go. Oh, yeah. Once we get it to the spot. You got to have agreement on what you. your exit strategy is going to be. And, and and yeah. I promise you. I, like the entire time we were building it up, I was nervous that he was mm. going to go, I don't know. I, mm. This is my baby. I don't want to let it go. But when we got the offers across, I mean, he was more high-fiving than yeah. 
no yeah, yeah, concern. He's, not, he's smart. He's yeah, yeah. He's he's can <laughs> figure all that out. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and but you're right. Yeah, people it, do have that pride. You, you got you got to think about a the company as a company, and it's filled of people. Right. And everybody's working to that same thing. Everybody needs to be rewarded. Everybody needs to be blessed by it. Everybody needs to keep, you know, I mean, and it's, that's what companies do. Right. It's not about the founder mentality. I mean, well, I'm just, you well, know. Good companies do. Right. I, I, think, yeah. I think the other thing is too, like a lot of founders feel like, oh, if I sell the company, somehow I'm shorting my employees. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you sell the company, you give your oh, employees yeah. new opportunities they would not have had if you had not sold the company. Yeah. I mean, not only that, we shared from the proceeds of the sale. You're right. The entire exactly. team. And yeah. like seeing well, how it changed a, a lot of the deal. lives was the most rewarding sure. thing of it for me. The best two yeah. days of my entire career are still those two days. Like when, when we, you know, had that sell, JS and I got to sit down. Like we did, we scheduled 15 minute increments with everybody in the company. a day and a half. We took a day and a half. Yep. But I mean, it was just like. Did you have any? I mean, we, 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 would, we would bring people, folks in and, and, you know, let them know what. Yeah, it's like they just season. won the lottery, dude. And it was, but yeah. it was like Jason and I just look at. Him. I mean, man, it's just like this emotion. Tears. Oh, and it was yeah. funny because oh. different people react in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Right? Some people were just psyched, you know, and <laughs> yeah. some people just, I mean, just tears started falling. We're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta build them back up before we let us walk. We out. got three more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Because it looks like people are getting fired in here, right? Did Did you? Um, I'm just curious, and I know this might be a difficult question, but did anybody say like, well, actually, I expected more than this. That no, made you I mean, want to we, slap. We had a, a person or two who was just like, "Oh, okay, cool, face," yeah, and walked out. And but it's also like, and, it's, and I think after some reflection, it's like no one expected it. Yeah, and people respond different. Sure, and they're you know it's, it's that shock too. Yeah. yeah, and so a lot of times it's it's not that they weren't grateful or they expected more. Right, they, they probably just were like, "Oh, holy cow." Yeah, okay. they, they couldn't process yeah. it right at the time. Yeah, it's just like, is this real or something? It's like right? winning the lottery, man. That was part of the emotional <laughs> roller coaster because you'd have some of them that would break down, and the other ones would be like, "Okay, thanks," and we're like, mm, "Okay, that was different." Than <laughs> it was. It was like it was like my sister. I don't know if I ever told you that story, but she she went on Antiques Roadshow and she brought this little Buddha statue at. And when they told her they thought it was worth like eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand, she almost fainted because she paid oh, wow. somewhere like fifty to a hundred bucks for it. Oh Actually, goodness. she sold it at auction for two point one million dollars. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> but she was shocked Good for her for figuring that out. Yeah, when they <laughs> said eighty to one twenty, she's like, "Wow!" You know, she's, she thought I could take my kids on vacation yeah. in Europe. You know, yeah. whatever. That's <laughs> but anyway. So yeah, that shock that that must have been so exciting for you though. Honestly, so, what a great time! Oh, it was man, it was, it was a huge blessing. Just, I mean, so I want to, uh, you know, one of the more important things I want to make sure we get in this podcast when we got you here is, is you know, and I don't want you to give any of your secrets away, JS. I do. I want them to well, give secrets away. I'm probably not ever going to write a book, so I might as well put it on. Well, there, right? Might as well. Yeah. But you came in when you came in. And we talk about this, you know, small business entrepreneurs, right? I mean, it was a typical scenario. I didn't have a roadmap plan. All I had was, I go to I go to Walmart, get some freaking work, and I'd understand what the problems <laughs> were, and I'd run back to the team, and I'd say, like, this is where we need to go. Like, yeah. this is the answer. Let's all sure. everybody migrate toward this mission, right? And I go do it again the next week and the next week. Mm -hmm. Well, Jazz comes in and quickly realizes this after the uh, the poster boards of ID. Oh my gosh. This pretty is a good, great pretty story. Good story. Tell, tell that story. Because this, this, this thing can be better for me. Yeah. Yes. I mean, this is such an the epitome of Eric and his personality and, and vision he's got, but also, uh, you know, the, con, the how the vision continues to build more vision the Eric before it executes anything, right? Uh -huh. but, um, <laughs> so we got in, and I kept hearing these names of these different products. And, and so in our software, there are different tools. And I, right. I always have referred to them as the products, right? Yeah. And so... Skew Ninja has 20 something tools. Skew Ninja is a software name, right? Sure. Software product. Um, and it, I call them like, you know, it's 20 something different products now. But at the time, there were about four or five mm -hmm. that were live. And so I knew of those, but then I kept hearing these other names, was, you know, Spider Crush and Item Tron. And, and I'm just sitting here and I'm like, wait, 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 which, which one is Spider Crush? What does that do? Spider which one is it? And, and I'm just like, like, just like, I still don't understand that. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> so anyway, at, you know, so at the time, uh, you know, Roger Dickey was our head of development and uh, Susie Owens was our head of kind of 
Hard art didn't. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, and I don't remember what the official title was, but she was, you know, customer uh, support and kind of yeah. like project management. Yeah, yeah. What she was doing a lot of. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they start trying, and I'm like, okay, time out. Like, <laughs> I let's go get some big post-it notes, put them on the wall. And at the time, we're in this temporary office, and it was smaller than this room right here that we're in, right? Yeah. But and I was like, let's write up. A, the name of whatever we're going to build. I want to know what it does, how important it is to the customer, mm -hmm. how much work has been done, how much work is yet to do, mm -hmm. and is the work that needs to be done front end or back end? So mm -hmm. user interface side or like computational back work. end, make it yeah. work, right? Sure. Um, and then I want to go through and prioritize them. And so we Gosh. go through one. What a logical approach. I know it was crazy. Man, I love it, took, it. it took two days okay. to walk to walk through these. And I had nothing else yeah. to do. I just joined the company, right? This was like three days in. Mm -hmm. And so we start putting up the post-it notes. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, we covered up one wall, we covered up a second, we covered up a third, and we started <laughs> on the fourth wall in the place. And at one point I was wondering if we we're gonna run out of walls in here. <laughs> we're gonna have to go to the next room or something. Lots and, of ideas. Oh lots look, of there, there were probably 26 or so Somewhere that, that we had done development work on, mm -hmm. but had not gotten out the gate. Right. And so what I started doing is going, all right, this one is important. Yeah. And it's only got eight hours mm -hmm. of work. To bring it to total Yeah. So fruition. let's get it in the software. Right. Let's yeah. wrap it up. Right. You know, and we started prioritizing. And then, you know, this one's really important, but it's not as far along. Right. But it really is truly important, and this makes us this differentiates us sure. from others. So let's go ahead and invest the time in it. And but we started cranking out, yeah, you know these these pieces. It's awesome. So I think that gets to where your story. No, it does. I mean, yeah, because mm -hmm. like it's you know, and and then your approach to that, and then you're able to then not only the product side, but then you start you know looking at the people and what the people are doing, what the positions and the roles that they're playing. And then what are their goals? And, and then how do you assign metrics to, the, to to achieve those goals that all roll up to the company? I mean, it's yeah. just, it is fantastic. Like, you know, it's mm -hmm. nothing that I could really, I, I didn't ever have, I obviously didn't have the playbook for it, but also never had the time in my mind for it because, I mean, there was more products that needed to be invented, right? There's there's no playbook ever for this stuff. But, you I have mean, to this, make it up as you this, go. But that's the thing. But he has prior like, experience. He did. Okay. He did. See, and, that's the but thing. But he came in and playbooked this thing. Mm -hmm. And it was... Laid out the road. I wish, I wish you could do a movie about the, the transition of the culture. I mean, we always had a really fun and invigorating oh, culture. Well, you know, and it's it's going to be fun. Yeah, Absolutely. It was always. Fun. always. Great always. times. And everybody yeah. is loving what we're doing. But what JS was able to do was then attach like a roadmap to it so people knew like what was what's your statements on it like you have three things yeah so four things so okay. and what it really boils down to and I learned a lot of this at Pace Industries or figured it out at Pace Industries tell people what Pace Industries yeah so does. Pace Industries so it's You've very non Walmart right <laughs> right uh, so Pace Industries is aluminum magnesium and zinc die casting okay so you're making components for manufacturers so Harley Davidson's one of their yep. top customer was when I was there one of their top customers Weber Gas Grills okay um. You know, uh, tier two automotive. You guys made wheels, didn't you? Stuff. Or did you? That was superior. I knew so they're very similar. Them too, but I, okay. It's I a different, yeah, it's a different pick process, up. but okay. a very similar business, sure. right? Okay. Very similar type of business. Like foundry work. I mean, yeah. it's tough work, right. right? I mean, it's it's very blue collar. Um, I understand. In the summer in Harrison, Arkansas, oh, making gosh. die castings. I mean, the, the oh, aluminum is yeah. 1,200 degrees. Yeah. And you're sitting next to a machine. And I mean, it's probably 140 it's degrees. Brutal. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah. Front, working in the front of that machine. Okay, so you were. So at, anyway, yeah, I, I just wanted to give people some. Yeah, camera it's reference. great. I appreciate. How that. did you know so much about software coming from that? Well, yeah, yeah I had done that before, and okay. so mm -hmm. I, you know, my first real startup was uh, during the first internet boom, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in like '98. Yeah, and uh, I was in college at the University of Oklahoma and started a comparison shopping engine. Okay. Which is so funny because it was all based on scrape data, mm -hmm. which is what Skew Ninja, a lot of Skew Ninja tools are based on. So it was wow. weird. Yeah. It's been around 20 years later. Uh -huh. um, but, um, you know, it was software. And then I was one of the founders of Field Agent. Right. Which was okay, the first sure. app that actually pays users, yeah. right? And they're still doing great here in Northwest Arkansas. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of it goes back to uh, employee engagement. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, and, and I could throw out some crazy statistics about us, but one of the reasons we were so successful is because we retained our employees. 
At yeah. Pace you're talking about? No, I'm talking about a white spider. White spider. Oh, white I believe it's still true. Yeah. And Absolutely. If you're going to retain your employees, you have yeah. to have a high level of engagement, right? Right. And, um, and so- People want to be part of the process. They want to know what's going on. It's super critical. Yeah. And so I, I believe there, there are four keys to having a high employee engagement. And there are a lot of other things that play into it, but okay. four things are really important. Number one, you have to have a clear vision of the goals of the company. Amen to that. People have to be able to understand it, and you, it's, it needs to be transparent. Mm-hmm. Number two, they need um, to know what's expected of them. Right. All right, so that, that comes down to personal KPIs. Yep. Then they have to be able to see how, how what is expected of them contributes to the goals of the company. Yeah. This gives them meaning, right, and purpose. Agreed. And finally, they need to know where they stand at all times. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so if you do this, then there's a path to what I'm, I know how I'm doing. I know that I'm, because I'm doing it well, I know how it contributes to the goal of the company. And so I have meaning and I have purpose and I'm, there's a reason I'm here. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, what we did and, and, and the, the fourth piece there and know how they stand at all times, you know, our KPIs were 90% objective metrics that they could measure. Right. And then 10% was, are you playing well with the team? Sure. Right. If you don't get the 10%, there's a problem. Probably, right. right. Yeah. And so it, it's very objective and that's very easy with sales. Mm-hmm. Sure. How many calls are you making? How many yeah. It's a lot harder up? with developers. What's your close ratio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dollars brought in. Sure. With developers, we found some ways to like mm-hmm. Jira software on hours mm-hmm. and the analytics and of things over, they knocked yeah. out. Um, but but it's hard because you have for yeah, each different group you have to figure out how to make it objective right and with some it's tough yeah right yeah. oh yeah I but, bet but a lot of that what? came that the goals of the company it goes back to what I referred to as strategic deployment yeah and so this is lean manufacturing techniques sure. to a production sure. system this is what I learned at Pace Industries mm-hmm. and because we were manufacturing and yeah. automotive and that's what you had to do back then right yeah now I hated it there. Mm-hmm. Right. I was just going to be honest. Like this was, these were very long meetings, stuff that I did not feel like it was the best use of my time to sit in and hear it all, all the time. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and we were doing some other stuff with the sales group within Salesforce to track metrics and stuff. And so I just, I felt, I, I kind of resented it back then. Right. Sure. And so when, I'm, when I joined, I remember this moment where I'm thinking, what, what do we need here to bring this company together and have a vision and move a direction? And I was just like, crap, it's SD. <laughs> yeah. Strategic, mm-hmm. strategic appointment. And we call it SD. <coughs> I'm like, crap, it's SD. And so, but what I did was an abbreviated version of it, right? Mm-hmm. So it wasn't long meetings, but what we did is we set four breakthrough objectives mm-hmm. and it was a uh, amount of revenue, number of subscribers, uh, Reduction of churn. Reduction of churn and uh, best-in-class products within SKU Ninja. Right. Because at the time, we are just going to be soft. That's the hardest one to determine, I would think. It was it? it was tough in general. And it was really yeah. hard to get. We, we still never got that to a true objective yeah. measurement. Right. But I feel like we were very honest with ourselves about it. Yeah. And, and we could justify but, if we thought it was best-in-class. I mean, that all makes great sense to me. And, and I, I'm... Uh, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm very skeptical of some of these programs like EOS that everybody right. talks about because they do result in a million friggin' meetings that suck the life force out of you. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. this seems like a good approach, what you just described, because it's common sense. I mean, you don't have to name it. It just, you have to do it. I think. Right. But let me ask you this. So let's say your vision is absolutely clear. You're going to go here. This is how big the company's going to be. It's what it's going to be like. These are the types of clients you serve and things you do, whatever. It's, it's, it's crystal clear. Everybody knows that. And then you go to the next level. You said the individual and how they contribute to it and what's expected of them. What if what's expected of them is just, they're just not freaking willing to do it. It's like, you know what? I'm totally comfortable right now with what we're doing as a company. Mm. You know, I, I think it's easier when it's a younger company because mm-hmm. you're bringing new people in mm-hmm. and, and they and they get it's already in. established. It, it, it's already established. But what if you got a company that's been a certain way for ten years and this is the way we've always done it? It's always been good enough. Now you're coming in here telling me mm-hmm. this place has to be five times bigger than it mm-hmm. is. How do you deal with that person? 
I, I'm really curious. You, you, they're probably in the wrong organization if they're not willing to, to get on board with a new plan, right? But and, maybe they're really capable and they're good yeah. people and they're honest and that's a tough leadership well call. And they work well with their peers, you know, but they just don't want to do what they have to do to contribute to this bigger goal out there. They just they don't have a seat on the bus. Yeah, I, that's my opinion. And mm-hmm. and and maybe it takes time. To replace them with someone who is willing to get with the program, mm-hmm. um, and so I don't say if, if they feel that way, you just fire them right away, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you you find a way to either get them on board or get them out. I I, I just don't have patience for it. Like if we've got a plan, mm-hmm. we're a team, That's right? It, yeah. And and we're all going the right direction, right? Yeah. You know, there's there's the uh, do people. So when you've been in that position, again, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, you go. But when you've been in that position, let's say you made some of those tough calls in a place that historically has had low turnover. Mm-hmm. What was the reaction of the other people? Did they go, "Gosh, that JS is a real asshole. Mm. He's harsh. She's he's brutal." You know, well, not to my face. <laughs> I, I, I mean. You know, I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, did you get any of that? Did you hear any of that? Do you think people thought that about you? I, in there, I'll let you. Yeah, I'll, I'll after, come here. After, uh-huh. But yeah. uh, you know, my take on it was that we we're doing the right things for the right reasons, mm-hmm. and um, I believe like very strongly in transparency. Mm-hmm. And so, anytime there was something that I knew people weren't going to respond to, I would walk them through the reasons why the decision was made. Right. And and we had I think smart that's people, important. and they yeah. understood it. Right. And there were people who we said goodbye to, mm-hmm. who everybody loved. Sure. Um, but I had people come to me and say, that was a really hard thing to do, but mm-hmm. it was the right thing to do, and we all see that. Yeah. yeah. Right? We know that they were not on the same page with everybody else, even though we all like them. Do you, and, and I know this may be difficult to answer too, but so you developed this software company, right, at White Spider. You come out of Pace Industries, which has a lot of blue collar workers, machinists, machine operators, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, these people are. I'm sure some of them are more skilled than others. You know, like somebody's got to take the aluminum shavings and throw it in the bin to get recycled or whatever, right? But I mean, do you see a difference in those kind of people versus these professional white collar workers? Or are they really all essentially the same? and respond to sort of the same idea of a vision and how you contribute to it. I'm just curious. It's really hard to compare the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, one was a 3,000 person organization and right. White Spider when I joined was 13 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, I think people inherently are the same. They want the transparency, they want mm-hmm. to understand. One of the things we did at Pace that I was really proud of is um, we didn't try to dumb down the vision and the plan mm-hmm. for the, the the baseline the rack and workers, file work. right yeah um we we said hey then <laughs> this is their role right. doesn't mean they're not just as smart as the executives right okay and so don't don't treat them like they're i like less that. people I, I i really believe that um i like that and i i think that our listeners need to hear that yeah because sometimes you treat those people and then they respond in kind sure you right know, but a lot of small business owners, again, figure they're just dumb. They're a number on a spreadsheet. So many dollars per hour, we'll replace them. And you do you have know? to show people you care about them. I mean, that's yeah. something like one of our values at White Spider has been hospitality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, when it was first mentioned to me that someone felt like one of our values is hospitality, because it was never written down. It's just one of them that we yeah seem, seem to model. Um, I kind of laugh. I'm like, well, that'd be great if we were a hotel or a restaurant, right? But then I started thinking about it and I'm like, what is more important mm-hmm. than hospitality for your employees, partners, and clients? It's yeah. making them feel welcome, making them feel sure. wanted, making them comfortable. I like making that. Making them like yeah. to be there. Good term. And, you know, yeah. it, I don't think you'll see it on many, you know, Fortune 500 values charts, mm-hmm. but I really think yeah. it encompasses some, some of the great things about White Spider. But, you know, the, cr- the crazy statistic to me mm-hmm. is when I joined in 2019, that we were 13 people. We're almost at 150 today. Mm-hmm. And I think we've lost eight people along the way. Wow. That Over is telling. Five years. In a very competitive employment market. Oh, incredible. Very it, do, yeah. it, you mean the industry and the locale um, yeah. uh, combined 
Um, that is r really incredible. Well, it's so, a testament to the two of you and how you treat people. Well, it is. I, I, I think I got some comments on what we've been talking about because sorry, I th no, 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 no. I mean, you know, what I think is important is is like you have somebody like myself and even you know Alex, co-founder, who we're, we have really genuine. Like I can say a lot about Alex Maud, my co-founder. He was He's just a great guy. We love great Alex. guy, among the yeah. genuine, honest, sure, truthful. He shook his hand, he meant it, and he would right. follow through yep. with it. And then you have myself, which I, I believe in the same thing, right? I have those yep. values. Like my intentions are 100% solid too. I, I want to see people know. grow, all that stuff, make sure. money, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And be successful. Yeah. But the difference was in what JS came in and did, and what I think is really important for our audience to understand, because this is one of my greatest lessons in being JS's partner, is you have to make those things objective. Right. You have to put it on paper. You have to, and then, yeah. and not, not only in that, we talked about the spreadsheets, but then what JS would do, right, is yeah. this is the additional part, and JS probably doesn't even know how valuable it is. Not only did he, we set the plan, but then you would work with the team to develop that, and so everybody's aligned sure. and they're contributed to it. Always believe so, in that. Yeah, participate. The individuals in the owning what they're of course. involved. But then everybody that came in that company, if they're brand new, and then everybody that was working there on a very frequent, repetitive basis, mm -hmm. we would they would have we would have dialogue about it, mm -hmm. in an open dialogue, and probably in, a training session. The right. training is an yeah. hour we spend, and I'd bring them, teach them, yeah. the SD concept. Exactly, that was yeah. like the first thing that you would do. And then even as the company grew, we'd bring on ten people at a time or twenty. Sure. Like I would walk by, and you'd see JS in the boardroom right. with ten people there and twenty on the virtual this explaining, explaining this. Yeah. And, and going down it and, and it and was very engaging. But what it does is that it allows people to know where they're standing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think, I think that that's what maybe a lot of entrepreneurs and myself included, if I would have been able to grasp that from the beginning, there's a lot more I could have done a lot faster. But it wasn't until then. That's what was the alignment to it. I mean, it, right. it was it was absolutely uh, fantastic. Look, fantastic. I mean, you know, I'm a big believer in business planning and doing yep. it every year. I'm a big believer in open book management. Yep. Those are the key metrics, yep. right? Yep. Um, I think the problem, though, with a lot of companies, and and obviously this wasn't a problem for you, or if it was, you solved it. They don't have good gauges on the overall company. So I sure as hell cannot get down to the individual because no, yeah. the overall company doesn't know things like how many leads are we getting right now? Right. Um, you know, what's what's our rework cost? How much warranty work or service related work mm -hmm. do we have to do? Uh, solving customer problems mm -hmm. for things we've already sold or, yep. you know, these sort of critical metrics. If the company doesn't have any freaking idea of any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. then it's really hard to get those goals. So it seems like if you were to make a recommendation in, in, in sort of the order, you seem very sequence-oriented based on what you described to me, wouldn't you say that getting the company's plan and metrics for has to oh, it's top down, this? Without a doubt. Okay. Without a doubt. Good. good. And in the, way, in the way we structured SD, you had mm -hmm. four breakthrough objectives, and then each one had uh, a list of targets in the matrix, target matrix, right? Yeah. And we'd have, uh, within a breakthrough objective, you'd have improvement priorities, which are the things that we need to get better at. And then right. each of those would have an objective target uh -huh. or three, right? Yeah. And and then the KPIs would feed into one of those specific targets. Yeah. So if, as a company, we need to have 500 subscribers by the end of the year, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, then we're going to track monthly where, where's Absolutely. our starting point? Sure. Where's our ending point? How many per month do we need? How are we going to yeah. do that? And then it comes into marketing on how many leads they're generating as a KPI, sure. which leads to this, right? Uh, right. And a sales when, team with a close ratio. Have reviews with the team individually, like when reviews come up or we talk mm -hmm. about, I mean, a lot of this was tied to bonuses, right? All of it was tied. Yeah, to that's it. another critical piece here. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. But no, no, another no. critical piece here is um, if, if you don't tie it to a big anything yeah. other than just you you have your review and you're like, well, you missed your numbers. And they're like, yeah. oh, sorry. Like, oh, it's okay. Let's do better this time. No, it's, I'm sorry, but instead of $10,000 of a bonus, mm -hmm. you've hit 60%, you're getting 6,000. Yeah. yeah. Or you, you know, and, and we usually have minimum like 
qualification to even qualify in those percentages. Yeah. And you could identify like if somebody yeah. is. Now, that's one place I would depart with you guys. What's that? Bonuses? No. I mean, I do think the numbers have to precede it. And that's the, mm -hmm. that's really critical. But I'm not, I, I, I think there's a lot of people think that management's doing its job when it says, you did a good job, you get 10 grand, you didn't do so well, you get five. That's not management's real job. Management's real job is to get the five to perform where they mm. want them to. And a lot of companies, and I'm not saying that you guys yeah. did this, a lot of right. companies sort of end it right there. It's like, okay, we did our job. Yeah. Right. You know, we you don't want to say find your way to improve and get your full bonus. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm not good at that person. But, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm talking about yeah. there. It's I know what that, you're talking about. It's that next part is, is really your real. So, I'm a big believer in sort of more socialistic rewards that if the company hits its goals, mm. everybody's going to get their pro rata share, mm. but that creates the pressure on management and the employees that if somebody's not performing, we're all going to be on them. Okay. That guy mm. just got money he didn't deserve. Yeah. Now we're all on the problem. It's not just your problem. It's and if you've got a culture that enables en en okay. that, then that's a very positive thing. Maybe mm. you can do that. Maybe it takes a really small company for that to work. I, you know, but well, I've seen it work in larger settings. But anyway, it is, regardless of how you do it, that next step of trying to get those people to perform, I think is. I'm, and I'm sure you worked on that. But people who came in at fifty percent, you know, the, the next question is: Is this something we're failing them on, or is this something right. they're failing us on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you: um, a lot of times, cold. folks like <laughs> there there were people very focused on their mm -hmm. bonus metrics, right? Yeah. And like legit would hit every number on the dot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it wasn't that they were faking it; it's that they literally were like, "Now I'm moving on to the next one to get make sure I get it done mm -hmm. in this period." And we, one of the other things we did is we paid out every six months. And so the oh, bonus was guaranteed. More frequent. I have a big delivery. Every and once months. a year is too long. Yep. And too long. Uh, and in software, it moves so fast too. Yeah. You want to be yep. able to adjust targets sure. and things if needed. Yeah. Um, or even sometimes there were times where we we're like, well, this was one of your KPIs in January. Here we are in July. I remember in April, we told you to stop working on that. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's a move. So we're going to give you credit for it mm -hmm. because we told you, you know, change it. Right. Um, you know, but. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times those ob objective metrics started calling out who the underperformers were. Yes. And a couple of them decided to find a new role because they realized it was apparent they weren't cutting yeah. it, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, that, and that's great. I, it's that, like fun firing someone. It's yeah. Better, no. You think you need to fire them and then they decide to leave, right? Yeah. Self selection. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that works better. <laughs> Although when it goes too long, they were like, ah, thank God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you're like, why, why did we let it go so long? Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, those problems, the, the I, sooner you get, I mean, the sooner you can address it, the better. I think. Yeah, that's good news yeah. about doing it every six months is there's a, uh -huh. and there should yeah. be reviews monthly with yeah. leadership, right? But with top leadership, mm. you know, it was twice a year. And I mean, until mm. we got up over a hundred people, I sat in on every yeah, you review with you every were super person. super involved, man. Very, I mean, that's very, you know, the business and to, to run the business, you, you got to You I mentioned agree. something earlier about knowing the business, this guy being right. the business in and out. Yeah, I right? believe that. You know? I absolutely believe. Yeah, I mean, I think, man, I, like, I, I just, I, I sit over here. I knew this is a special one for me, right? Yeah. Because, like, I just sit well, over here. Special, I can see. Well, both of you are special. Yeah, really I mean, but special. yeah, you are special. This is a special table. This is special. I feel love. This is a special moment. That, there should be a lot of love because I'm throwing a lot yeah. of love at you guys. Thanks. Right now. It feels yeah, good. Well, hospitality, <laughs> yeah, your values. Right. But I mean, I think that you know what's <laughs> what I want to. If there is a listener out there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if there's one way I can help in this, is like. Man, I mean, you you don't have to do it alone, and you oh, I know, and you don't you don't need to expect of yourself to know everything. Like I can sit here and admit fully, and you guys know me. Like the way Mark can read a P and L and all the all the reports, and I mean, like you can just spit out stuff. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh, sounds great, man. Whatever. I mean, I trust in you. I mean, you know your your stuff there, and the same thing with JS and like the negotiation. I mean, anytime right. there's a anytime that there was a point of where a deal got to the point where I, I would get i would go out and hunt the interest sure and i could find interest but as soon as they started That's... asking questions i'm like hey you know you should really talk to js he's he'll Again. be able to articulate this stuff because he knows the business and then i'd sideline real quick real quick <laughs> and be happy to sideline and then support and this play supportive role the reason you were able to build your company yeah okay if you can't see that you're not good at everything and other people have skills yeah 
and build a team, nothing worth doing is going to be done by one person. Yeah. Right. It, it takes a team. It does. And I, I, don't know. I use the analogy a lot for, for folks when I'm talking to them about this. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, if I was to say, hey, JS, you need to go to the uh, charity ball with 2,000 people in the room and shake hands as many people as you can and build as many relationships as you can fast as possible. And by the way, do it well. Mm-hmm. I mean, he'd be like, man, I don't, I don't know about all that yeah, crap. You know, there's a lot of people that don't want to do that. But I know that I like to do that. Right. And that passion that you have behind whatever you're doing and you know you can do it well, you should emphasize those strengths. Yeah, instead of always working on your weaknesses, other people do on your weaknesses and capitalize on your strengths. And as an entrepreneur, I believe that. It doesn't make you immediately responsible to be strong in every the entire wheel of no. business. You Not cannot do it. It's too big. That's one reason why I've always believed in having partnerships in business. People ask me, like, I mean, they'll yeah. come up and they'll, oh, you've I'm, probably heard these sort of stories. Like, I had a partner. It was a terrible experience. You know, they'll say sure. that. And now I will more more like never do it again. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's not mine, bro. There's no, no way I could do it without I, a partner. I would say the same thing. But I want to go back to okay. one thing um, <laughs> that you were talking about with setting these goals and, you know, setting the vision for the company and the six month, you know, we may need to change things. Do you, how do you deal with people who are like, okay, you set this lofty vision out mm. there, right? Here we are now, but we're going here. All right, go. Why is that important to me? What, why do I care about that? Mm. Number one. And number two, what if they achieve their metrics that you lay out and then you go, okay, good. Now the next, now I got more good news for you. Now this is going up by 50%. This target's going to go up by 20%. So you just keep pushing the goals up. They're like, oh, I mean, I did everything you asked me to do. And my reward is now you want me to do even more. How do you respond to that? Yeah, and so, you know, I think we, we honestly, we have the, you have to the other, sometimes we have the other, issue which was we set our goals way too high out of the gate and then went okay that wasn't realistic right so now let's get back to reality yeah. but you know there's a saying in in you know toyota production system and, and all this stuff which is don't let perfect get in the way of progress sure and so you know a lot of it is the vulnerability or the transparency of hey we got it wrong yeah but you know what we learned a lot right and we're gonna get a lot better sure you know it's kind of like budgeting yeah. yeah, yeah. There's one thing you know coming out of a budget process. It's not going to go exactly. It's not correct. Plan. Your numbers are not <laughs> yeah, correct. Right. Right. It may be no out of forecast. It's not it's, right. 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 You know. And so you know, it's don't for the fear of not having it all figured out. Don't let that keep you from going and starting and doing it. Mm. Right. Yeah. And then oh, learn I as totally you go. Agree. I, now, you know, I think one of the things that we did that. It shocks me even looking back at it, how well we did it was hiring. We hired Ooh, really yeah, we did. I agree. Yeah, I feel I like agree. God brought the right people to us at the right times. Yeah. So it wasn't all us, but yeah. it, it wasn't by important. accident, right? You we got to be very, constantly recruiting. Yeah. And you got to know like where you're going to put these people and know who you're going to hire next when you have an opportunity. And you don't grow like we grew with only losing a few people if you didn't hire them, the right people. Right. right. So, so that's a big cause of turnover is hire the wrong person yep. in the first place, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you, so it's yeah. such yeah. a critical you, you, skill. Now, I think, I mean, you were always really diligent with, with that. Like you were, and, and not only that, but then whenever other, when we were growing and we had more managers, encouraging them to do that and coaching them to do that, that's how it allowed the company to so, just, we grew so fast. So I, I interviewed every single person we hired until July of this year. Right. Wow. I was the final interview for every single person. But I, I felt that. like that was as much respect for them joining us yeah. because they're becoming part of our family and they need right. to know what the leader's vision is. Absolutely. Is. I mean, if I was an uh, employee, I would want that if I could get that. And so I many people to said to me, I've never met a CEO before. <laughs> That's right. Well, here you go. I grew up with one in the house. So, <laughs> you know, like, you know, my dad was. So, you know, but. Uh, my dad was too. But the question is, what was he a CEO of? It varied. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> he was a little bit up and down in his businesses. Yeah. But so, yeah, that's, that's, but if someone is not willing to get on board and continue mm-hmm. striving for excellence, then you might not have hired the right person right. or you might find a different way to motivate them. People, different people are motivated in different, or maybe ways. there's a different job they should be in. I, you know, that's the, I like those. I do remember yeah. like a lot, what I learned a lot too is, is this, that statement you just made about people being motivated in different ways is like, sure. 
because I have my frame of motivation in which I will think is natural and normal, but there's folks that are motivated by money. There's folks that are motivated by title. There's folks that are, I mean, right. all these, but if you don't align to that as a leader. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. And so if I ever do write a book, it'll, it'll be similar to the book about love languages, right? Mm -hmm. Where different people like to give love in one way, sure. maybe mm -hmm. receive it in a different way. But you kind of got to figure that out about your partner to know how to show them that you love them in their language, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Similar with employees where mm -hmm. different people are motivated in different sure. ways. I believe that. And some people are just self-driven, right? right? They just want to succeed and they're competing against themselves. Yeah. And that's pretty easy. It's big, <laughs> right? Get out of their that's way. Yeah, you support them. Yeah. And, and yeah. the money people. Some right. people, it's like, if you pay me what I think is a fair wage, I'm going to work my butt off for yeah. you. Right. Um, with a minute that money I don't feel like I'm motivate some getting people. fair. Yeah, there's I'm no doubt. Off. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's usually pretty easy as long as you got the money to pay them. Right. Uh, but the tougher ones are some people, it's an inspirational leader. You know, yeah. I've heard, mm -hmm. heard the comment, I'd go to war with that guy about mm -hmm. their boss, right? Sure. Because mm -hmm. they believe in them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you've got to, that's a high standard. Right? Yeah. It's a really yeah. high standard. And then other people was by title. Mm -hmm. You know, I always use the example of like, you know, the yeah. banks, everybody's a VP. And I hate titles. <laughs> I, I, my experience is the more titles you give out, the more pissed off people are. Gee, I don't know. I wouldn't know anything okay. about that. I, I, you... I just. I just remember you. That. That's where, <laughs> I, we're out of time. Look at the clock. That's been my experience. It's, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I know you're right, though, because some people are just sort of ego-driven, insecure. They need that. Yeah. And so, you know, figuring out what yeah. motivates each individual employee. Right. If, if you can really, and that's a big time commitment. Yeah, I've never done good. it perfectly. But if you can do it, yeah, then you can keep every person feeling like they're wanted there, sure. they're and, mm -hmm. and driving and pushing and okay, rolling yes. the right direction. Right. Dude, it's here's the deal. Like, like you rolled it down and you tracked, and you not tracked it, but then you, you kept a reminder of it and you intentionally mm -hmm. thought about it when you run into those people every single time. I mean, as much as you could, right? I yeah. mean, no one's perfect, but but I mean, like that's what no, you would do. That's what he would do every day, day in and day yeah, out. That's he's, what he's, 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 he's considerate of that. He's smart and he's he knows what his primary role is yeah. and it's doing this. Yeah, I mean that's you know, well, yeah, and that's, that's what it became, right? Over time, yeah. I, I was the only finance person in sure. our business for way too long. Right, yeah. way too long. Um, hey, I did give you a good idea, a couple of good ideas along the way, in finance. No, 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 not a, no, no, let's not like, get, no. Yeah, we need proof. I, well, I would, I would come, I mean, like, man, you need to have somebody like on finance. You need to have somebody helping you on the operation side. Like it's time, man. I had no idea that that was needed until you told me that. <laughs> Listen, God, what a, did you see that? Like, it was a good idea. It absolutely was, was, was a good idea. It was just, one that was already well, okay, very so I top of mind. I hope encourage you to go across <laughs> that you fence did. at that time. You did. Yeah. This is a very interesting conversation, though, okay? Having the two of you here, who were partners in this business, yeah. did the classic entrepreneurial build up the business yeah. and sell for a lot of value. And I think it's a tremendous story. And we need to have JS back. Love it. And we can talk Agreed. about some other things so with this many, guy because he's yeah. very smart. I love oh, him. Yeah. You know, I can see why you got a partner well. You do. <laughs> I I I'm I'm sold. I do, um, man. I mean, there's there's so much to dig into. I mean and, there is. Yeah. So much to it. I mean, because we are like literally we're at we're an at hour. I know. Yeah, we are in an hour. Isn't I'd like crazy? to have this bowl in my china shop. Oh, 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 oh this is an analogy oh, I haven't heard oh, before. Oh, oh, or is that new to you? Oh, yeah. Leave it yeah. to Mark's why he's OG. Yeah. You know, he's really It's old. an old man. Um, <laughs> what do they call that um, metaphor? No, what what is that? Uh, what are those called? We don't know what you're talking about. It, 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 what the old man stories are. Anyway, forget <laughs> it. Uh, you can't remember. But, I'm, on, uh, I'm on board. Yeah, I can't I'm remember board. that. Uh, no, we'd love to have you back, man, because I think there's yeah. so much to dig into that because it, there's, I did. Uh, it's been impressive watching you and me and your partner mm -hmm. along those ways. And I mean, and I learned so much and I know the team has too, because one thing that, uh, you know, like that you brought up something earlier and you were saying, Hey, I'll, I'll say like, what did people think? Like when you made those oh, decisions, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And I was going to respond to that, but I would, I would tell you from outside and being able to hear enough that I could. I mean, I'm sure that it was still some close talk with, you know, even if I, right. I was around, yeah, but, but what everybody knew is that when the, those tough decisions were made, 
that they could not dispute mm -hmm. the consideration that you had about having to make those tough decisions, mm -hmm. you know, because it was. How valuable it's, is that? That it, it makes it easier for people to take. Bro, it, it does. It because does. It, it's it's they mature. Knew you cared. And, yes, yes. The whole time, because, but Thoughtful. that was. But the reason that was because of that daily commitment that you had, and understanding, mm -hmm. and working with them, and being attentive, and and then you would. Yeah. And there wasn't this. Hey, I'm gonna wait three weeks to address this this problem that we're having, or that somebody's. But sure. you're always coaching, and yep. you would bring them in, and you would have a very frank, objective conversation that was aligned into what was agreed on and that you agreed with. And so when those times came, it was it was always pleasant. And so the people that might have churned out the low amount, there's there was no, I, don't, I mean even with those, like I would say the 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 uh, the the amicable exit uh, what was is where those people walked away with uh us being friends yes yeah i mean exactly. that's the way it should be okay that's exactly what happened. when i was young 100%. i didn't understand that i'd be like you're fired you know <laughs> you're get right. mad whatever yeah, the older man. i got the more critical i realized that is you don't want anybody out there shooting you in the back true okay and true. you want to make friends with, you. with everybody exactly yes. so i mean this yeah. is one of the things yeah. is we it, had it's, such it, valuable ip Sure. That low turnover was one of the reasons that no one caught up to us. Yeah. yeah. And that's so true. You still don't see that many well, people doing. That's so true. No one's doing the way we're doing it, even right. today. Right. Right. That's very true. Good well, point. One of the things we need to talk about when we get JS back on the show is what's he going to do next? Ooh, because what's I think JS that's a, doing next? I think that is a really, um, <laughs> that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, and here, starting about podcast business. But you know what? You don't have to, JS. I got a hornet's ass nest for you to freaking come help do it all over again, bro. I keep telling him that. I'm like, hey, bro, don't worry. You keep trying to figure, you know, figure out what you're going to do. But I got a nest for you, ready for you to untangle again, buddy. All right. Please. Well, oh, it's been fun. <laughs> JS, really great having you on the show. Thanks for coming today. And I look forward to the next time we get together. Yeah, man. And Good stuff. Thank y'all. And until then, this has been another episode of Big, Big Talk About, about Small business. business. You can check Let's us out at www.bigtalkaboutsmallbusiness.com. Yep. And see all episodes of the show. Yeah, and don't forget to uh, subscribe to the e newsletter so you know when the new one comes out. Yep, every week. And send us questions. We yes. want questions because we love to have we JS. Did. Hey, here's the good. Ooh. Have JS back. Send some questions into us and let <laughs> JS answer them. I like and that it. way. I can we can I'll prepare him for the next episode, unlike what I did today. Well, okay. I mean, why would I prepare him? That sounds like fun. He's, He's pretty low pressure. Like low pressure to just shoot from the hip. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what. I mean. Yeah, there's no work to do. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Big Talk About Small Business. If you have any questions or ideas for upcoming shows, be sure to head over to our website, www.bigtalkaboutsmallbusiness.com, and click on the Ask the Host button for the chance to have your questions answered on the show. Stay connected with us on LinkedIn at Big Talk About Small Business. And be sure to head over to our website to read articles, browse episodes, and ask questions about upcoming shows.